This is an introduction to the Heavy Carbon Company Endocarb system. This is a unique boost to fuse carburizing system that will reduce carburizing times by approximately one third. The uniqueness of this system is what differentiates it from conventional boost to fuse carburizing cycles. The system is not limited to deep case carburizing. By producing an atmosphere with a carb potential ranging anywhere between 0.1% and 1.5% carbon, you can heat treat anything from neutral hardening to deep case carburizing or carbonitriting and this is all done without creating detrimental metallurgical effects or soot. Heat traders require the ability to process a wide range of cycles at an equally wide range of car potentials and the versatility of this system allows you to do that. The savings when using this system will be seen immediately and obviously most significant relative to the deeper case requirements cutting long cycle time by a third. The major components of the endocarp system are as follows. The unit on the furnace, the compressor, the flow scopes, and the control instrument. The only air used in the endocarb system is the air gas mixture that enters the retort. This is for a reaction to produce an atmosphere. The air is a fixed flow that never changes. Air is never added in the furnace. The carbon potential is controlled by increasing the enriching gas flow only as needed. Air is never added to control the carbon potential. In this manner, the only gas that is used is the gas that is necessary. There's never any excess gas, which in turn means no waste. Besides saving costs due to shorter cycle times, an exciting benefit for a heat treater like myself is the advantage of the heavy carbon system as it relates to plain carbon steel such as 1018, 1020, or 12L14. Whether you're deep case carburizing to require an effective case depth or carbonitriding to a shallow effective case depth on plain carbons, the first dilemma for the heat treater is meeting that effective case depth requirement, yet at the same time maintaining the best dimensional stability. From a distortional standpoint, most parts would not be able to withstand a higher quench severity. A higher quench severity would certainly bring out a more defined case versus a diffused case However, for example, from oil quenching to water quenching could, could very well result in the proper effective case depth, but likely unacceptable parts relative their, to their dimensional requirements. The second dilemma relates to the lack of predictability with longer cycle times than is necessary that you're using to meet that effective case depth requirement. This is often necessary to do on plain carbon steels where you need to increase the total case depth in order to meet the effective. This results in a more diffused total case depth and would certainly look quite differently with a higher quench severity. The boost diffuse method in the heavy carbon system produces a well-defined, high quality, and high hardness case, allowing you to use the shortest possible cycle times while still using conventional oil quenching thus solving both problems.